Welcome in, everybody. I'm Devin O'Day, and it is Main Street Today time, and today is a big day for several reasons. Well, first of all, the breaking news, there was just a press conference. Uh, the Operation Volunteer Strong has recovered 150 lost children, uh, reported missing children in the state of Tennessee. 150 were found out of 243 agencies. Operation uh, Volunteer Strong has the U.S. Marshals with the uh, Tennessee uh, DCS, Department of Children's Services, and TBI working together in concert. And 150 children were found. So let's celebrate that. Let's keep that effort going and pay attention to Amber Alerts and, and work with these wonderful agencies. Another thing that today is, it is a the anniversary before the pandemic was ever started. Uh, Middle Tennessee was wrecked by tornadoes with East Nashville and Mount Juliet, and then down to Putnam County and uh, Benton County. It just it hit so many people. There were 25 souls lost. And Fox 17 today, one of uh, a, just a, a wonderful organization, they did a beautiful retrospect of the 25 souls lost. And I encourage you to go to fox17.com to read those people who left us during that time. And remembering is all about what our next guest tells us. He is um, Randy Nash, and he's going to join us right now from Sumner Funeral and Cremation. And uh, how are you, my friend? This is a special day for you because this marks one year since you opened Sumner Funeral and Cremation, right? Yeah, yeah. Today is today is one year. I'm gonna adjust this camera a little bit because it's all of them. I'm real close. Um, yeah. Just back some. Uh, so I did today, the same yeah. thing. <laughs> um, today was uh, one year ago. Today we took over here at, at Sumner Funeral and Cremation. Um, so it's uh, hard to believe it's been a year. Um, that, just absolutely blows my mind that it's been that long. But you know, we're we're thankful for for uh, for what we have and the families we've served and the families that we will serve. And um, we've uh, we served uh, right over, just over 180 families in the last 12 months, and um, that is far and above beyond and above what I thought we would do. Um, but we're grateful to those folks who place their trust in us, and um, yeah. and just that that's why we're here is for, for the families that that uh, that that need up need need us to help them. It is a matter of trust. And you walk through uh, some of the hardest times in someone's life. When a family member or a friend is lost, uh, you walk through some important things. And today we're going to talk about, because you are the new uh, obituary sponsor. And I know yeah. that's a weird that's that's a weird <laughs> phrase, obituary sponsor, but obituaries are very important. And I, I know, I, and I think I could speak for any funeral home in Middle Tennessee that is grateful for Main Street Media that the fact that 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 Dave Gould does not believe in you know in, in charging for obituaries that it's a you know we they are these are true community newspapers and and obituaries um are for the community and um and that's that's a big thing especially it's in for the families you know, it, it helps them too because you know there, there are other papers that charge for it and they charge a lot of money for it and um that that <clears throat> it, that is that has led to the um the influx of more online obituaries. You know, we use our website for every family that every, you know, and not every family chooses to do an obituary. So they may, they may, you know, want things to be more private or they may not want, you know, their, the information out there. And, and we respect that. That's what they want. That's what we do. Uh, but, but the families that do want that and, and can we, you know, when we tell them, well, you know, what's that cost? Well, you know, if you look run at the local papers, you know, we usually run it in the Gallatin paper and the Henderson paper as a standard. Um, you know, there's, there's no charge for that. And that's, that's a big deal. And so, um, when um, your colleague, um, Randy Moore, AKA Moon Pie, um, <laughs> came to me and said, hey, you know, there's here's what we're doing with this this online newspaper. And I thought it was really cool. He showed me what it was gonna be similar it's to. Gonna, just and, like this, yep, just like yep. this. And so I was it looking at it yesterday and I, I actually was, I looked through a lot of it um, and um, he, so, you know, what about that? And he, we mentioned, as I mentioned, the obituary banner page on other papers before. And he said, well, he said, this is what, you know, these are the, this is what we got. And so I decided um, that was what we needed to do. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it goes across Middle Tennessee. And so hopefully, you know, there's a, you know people will, um, 
if people have information, they could click on the the, the, um, the ad there and, and get. I think it takes it straight to our website. I actually didn't try that. I did everything else, but click on my own ad. <laughs> so, um, but um, you know, I, I think it's an awesome uh, thing for the people of Middle Tennessee to have that for for you know for a new another paper to you know, another publication. I hate to say paper because it's online, but it is. It's what it is. That's it is, it, it, and it's yeah. Just but, chock full of information about us, yeah, about here in Middle Tennessee. Yeah, and it and it's you know, and I know that there was stuff from, you know, there there was some some national news and other things in there too. But you know, a paper that we can, you know, a true hometown newspaper or home, I don't know if hometown is the word, but all of, uh, that covers all of Middle Tennessee. Right. And, and that that's you know and and you know um, encompasses everybody. So I think that it's a big right. deal. And and I I, I would you know. I, I've said for years that the other, I'm not, I won't name names, other paper in town needed competition. And so I'm glad that, that they do. Well, we are proud to offer a free service to get the word out because the, when you're in shock, you, you, you want to tell people what's going on. You want to let them know about uh, celebrations of life. But the first thing where everything starts is writing an obituary. And on your website, it's summerfuneral.com. They've got, let's see if we get that to pop up. All right. How to write an obituary. Uh, Randy, let's go through a couple of these things because when people want to write an obituary, it's not as detailed as what people think. It's not as scary as what people think. No, no. And, and you know, you, regardless of what funeral home you use, I would say 99.9% .9 of funeral directors are, have, have written an obituary before. And um, so, you know, the, the basic things are listed here, but you know, obviously the name of the person, their age, where they lived, um, when they passed away, who their family is, you know, and you can be as detailed in an obituary as you want to be, or you can be as brief in it as you want to be. Um, you know, things about their life, like military service and volunteer service, things like that, that um, we're, we're not writing an obituary, we're writing a life story, we're, we're, we're giving people a, a snapshot of what that person's life was. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes obituaries are funny. Sometimes they're somber. Sometimes they're vulgar. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I, you know, I've seen all sorts of things in obituaries. I've seen, and and so we, when people, uh, I, I I don't mind writing obituaries for people at all. But I I really love when people do it themselves because it really puts a a personal touch on it. And, and and another way for the family to be involved in that, the the funeral, you know, the memorial process, the funeral process, the healing, and it helps them to, you know, maybe even start the healing process, at, you know, going through that, you know, the their loved one's life and, and thinking about, you know, you know, the walk in their shoes for a minute and think about where they've been and and put that to paper, and that's that's pretty neat. The first thing that I do when I see obituaries, and the first question everybody asks is, well, have they died? Do you include how someone passes in an obituary or is that just up to the person? We, we have, um, over the years from time to time. Yes, that's happened. Um, but, um, hold on a second. I'm live on Facebook right now. No, yeah, <laughs> no. I don't expect, Hey, how are you? <laughs> See, sorry this is to, our family. Sorry to bombard y'all. I'll let you. You didn't. You didn't. This is family, and this is what we're all about here anyway, at Main Street. Um, <laughs> and so from time to time, yes, that does happen. And there are, um, you know, people that want that in there. But traditionally, no, that is a thing we try to, you know, keep private. Um, mm -hmm. you, you can tell some things, you know, in obituaries, maybe the person had cancer or something like that. If you see that they made donations to the Cancer Society or to... Um, the Lung Association or the Heart Association, things like that. Um, recently, in the last 12 months, that has changed. However, um, we had several people that uh, we put that their cause of death was due to complications of, of COVID-19. Um, I, if that's what people want, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. um, it's up to the person. And that starts with the pre-planning. People can actually mm -hmm. write their own obituaries and have them filed. You told me a story of of someone who wrote their obituary, but they changed it several times. Yeah, in the last 12 months has changed it like three times. Um, they've added to it, they took some things away, and that's fine. I mean, that we put it, we they sent me a copy, I printed it off, I put it in the file, and I just, and I put, you know, the date, I would put it in there so I know that this is the most recent one. And if that's what they want to do, that's fine. I mean, I have people that bring us the pictures, or they bring us, um, uh, 
um, you know, they I have people that bring me. I've got a, I have one person that brought me copies of their will and stuff. So we have that, too. We don't necessarily need that. But I'm a firm believer in being prepared. And if that helps you be prepared and that puts it one more place where, hey, you know, if somebody was to lose it or something, because it happens all the time when people don't know if a person has a will or does have one and can't find it. Or, you know, the, maybe the attorney that did it kept on the file with that attorney is out of business or passed away or closed or what have you. So, you know, um, there, there's, and, uh, there's not, there's never so much, so, such a thing as too much information in a prearrangement. 615-452-9059. Mm -hmm. We so appreciate you. SumnerFuneral.com has a lot of resources that you can find. And Randy, you are uh, such a source of great information and you have it there, whether it comes to grief, planning a funeral. Right, the, the only thing I'll say is our, about our website is when we, um, when we took over, when I took over this business last year, um, I wanted to design a website that was user friendly and mobile friendly and, our, and we have accomplished both of those. And I wanted it to be a source of information for people that they can look on there and, and, um, and it, you know, they can, people can actually, they can go in and give us all the information they would need for it. We would need for a prearrangement, except for, you know, picking things out and paying for it. They can do that, that much actually on there. Um, they can send us contact forms. There's obituaries. You can leave guest book. You can leave um, comments on people's obituaries. They can even, you can even order flowers, or other things directly from the website to send to the family. That's um, so it's, cool. so it's just a way to, um, it's another service we provide. We don't, you know, we don't, there's, it's, it, um, it's for the for the families and for the, the community and and um, there's even things on there that I don't there's so much on there that I don't I'm not seeing every single thing because every now and then somebody will call and say well I saw such and such on your website and I'm like where did you see that because I need to go look at it so, <laughs> um, because but, it changes from time to time and you add things every day it's just right, great yeah, we, we just recently added um, I got all of our staff pictures and things up there so we have that I, I kind of held off on that just because I it's about, you know, the, the funeral homes on a, you know, our business is not about us. It's about our families. But, you know, I look at more other, so many funeral homes have their staff members on there. People want to see who they're talking to when they call in. So I put all of our staff on there and um, uh, that that's, I think, helpful for people too. So they can put a face with a name. Well, we appreciate you and you guys can go and check out some of the stories that Randy has about what he does as a funeral director uh, by going to his uh, podcast series, Six Feet Away. And uh, there's some really, really, even even some funny stories that we have that we've shared about <laughs> being a funeral director. Yeah, there's a few. There's some good ones on there. there uh, <laughs> there's, and we, we acquire more stories every day. So, <laughs> Bye, Randy. Bye. I love him. Uh, you know, he's made me think about things that I never would have thought about. And he's took, taken the morbid thought about planning a funeral just completely out of the picture. I tell you somebody else who has really changed my my thinking on home decor and things as unsexy as gutters. Big J here at Monster Home Services. I want to show you something. We install gutters all over Nashville, Tennessee, South Nashville, North Nashville anywhere Clarksville. When we put your gutters up, we don't put up just some cheap gutters. Some guys come up there, throw it up, it's gonna fall off in a couple of years. Let me show you something real quick. I'm a big guy and I actually weigh 389 pounds there. Now watch this, we're not gonna cut away. Here's a four foot section of gutter right here, okay? It's got our patented Valor gutter guard on it. It'll never clog. If it ever clogs, we'll clean it. If your gutter clogs, I'll give all your money back. It's better than anything on the market. You don't have to buy vinyl gutter guards and the curved guards and stuff like that. It's gonna work. You're never gonna clean gutters again. But even if you just need gutters, check this out. 389 pounds. Hopefully it'll creak a little bit, I'm hoping. all day every day when you get gutters from monster it's a one-time shot and we're going to beat anybody's price on them anyway so give us a call 615-509-4375 big j monster home services call us now see i told you making gutter sexy <laughs> by who's probably one of the most creative cats i've ever met in my whole life and we share a birthday 
and I love every everything he's ever done. Before that, though, before we go to Mark Colley, who's in the waiting room right now, we're going to say good morning to my friend Marty Luffman, who is watching and uh, glad to have him as part of what we do every day. If you guys want to leave a comment, we love to share your comments on the show and uh, standing by. Let's see if I can pop that over there. There's my buddy. Good morning. How are you? I'm hey, good. Hey, Mark. I'm good. And how are you? You know, just making lemonade out here. Well, it's great to see you. It's good to see you, too. Good to see you, too. Man, I tell you what, this new project, a new single just came out. And wow, it is so you. It is so you. Thank the new, you. The new single, Born Ready, is part of a bigger project. Tell people what you've been up to because you're a writer, uh, you're an actor. I'm very proud of it. It's taken them some time to complete. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty good broad, when you, get, when you hear the entire record, and I'm anxious for you to hear it, uh, but uh, Born Ready is the first single. And as you as you'll listen to it, it pretty much touches every base that I've that I've crossed, you know. And uh, from Wayland to Cash to Carl Perkins, you know, it was an opportunity for me to really uh, the the stories, the originals, are derived from a story that I've been working on, and a project I've been working on for many years with my friend Jonathan Hensley, who is a screenwriter and storyteller, and. Uh, the songs are, are built based around a character who was sort of a uh, roadhouse, uh, you know, performer and a uh, songwriter, but his, he sort of has a double life and part of it, he's an avenger of evil and it's called the rockabilly Hitman. And it's a graphic, it will be out as a graphic novel uh, this fall. Uh, well, I don't have any details on that. I can't talk a lot about it, but I can talk about the music around it. And all these songs sort of help paint the picture and tell the story and bring to life this character, Jesse Wayne Harden, uh, the rockabilly hitman. And but the songs, a lot of every song I write's got a little me in it, you know. And uh, the sort of the story that takes place in this album uh, are life experiences of my own, from my perspective. But they're really from the perspective of this guy who's a trying to do some good with his life, even if he has to do wrong to get it done. <laughs> yeah. We're going to listen to the first single right now. Uh -huh. The people involved, there's, there's tons of people involved in this project, but we're, we can talk about those in just a second. Mm -hmm.
after all the love we've made Give a damn what people say I do believe there'll be no stopping you and me Play the single, which dropped Friday. Yeah, dropped Friday. Yeah, just came out. And, uh, you know, that's just right back to my earliest, uh, you know, Roadhouse band days, Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash, you know. And a little Bruce Springsteen. I don't know. It's just a little bit of everything I've been doing. Uh, it's a fun song, you know. It is I, fun. I wrote that with Gary Nixon and Kenny Greenberg. And so a couple of guys that know a little something about, you know, Texas and Rock and roll, too, you know. I think there's like a law that if you're writing blues in Tennessee, that Gary Nicholson has to be on the project. Yeah, <laughs> he does. <laughs> he's, he's taught me a lot about songwriting, you know. But I was going to say, uh, when I was writing that song, I, had, I, saw, I always like to have an image of somebody that the song might represent. And I was just watching Jerry House dance. <laughs> And when I was doing it, I, I was like watching Jerry dance on a bar, you know. Yeah, there you go. There you and go. So, that is so truly when you good. talk to him, tell him that he was part of the inspiration for this song. I will. I'll definitely do that. Let's talk Kenny Greenberg for a minute. Right. Uh, when did you get when did you meet Kenny Greenberg? Is he part of the production of this whole project? Kenny and uh Kenny and Chad Cromwell produced this record with me and they are they were fabulous. They actually I've known Kenny a long time, you know, just from making records, you know, he's played on a lot of hits and a lot of, you know, a lot of music and uh, been a fan of his. And Chad, you know, he's from Memphis, you know, and I cut my teeth down there, you know, so I've known him a long time, played on, you know, just, if you've been making records very long in this town, you're going to work with both of them sometime. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> but uh, Chad and uh, Kenny and I did a thing for the Nashville TV show as a, something for a, Nashville Live, I think it's called, and uh, and we played a few songs, you know, and they tracked some stuff for the TV show with me, and Chad said we should make a record, you know, and at the time I was writing these songs and working on this project, but uh, I think I have to thank them for sort of pushing me to, to try it, so I thought I'd try to start recording this story, you know, <laughs> this is sort of like a Walking Tall, the musical, you know. <laughs> I love it. And so, I, uh, you know, that when, when this whole thing comes together, but these songs are, uh, and Kenny you know, is the best player I know, and Chad, just, you know, you, you tell it, it I, if you hear a record, if you know it's Chad, I know it's him as soon as I hear that kick, you know. Mm -hmm. But they did a great job. We wrote a lot of these songs together, you know, sort of walked down this road together, and and it was a great, it was a, one of the most uh, rewarding experiences creatively for me. Uh, because I was, there were no boundaries, you know, and we were sort of making up new rules as we went. And uh, it's just loud and uh, proud and, you know, it's pure country <laughs> and uh, and rock yeah. and roll too, you yeah. know. Rockabillyhitman.com. That's yeah. you can find that by going to markcolly.com. There's a link to it. And you can see a snippet of every song that's coming. Uh, Jonathan Hensley and I, created the characters, you know, and the story. And uh, Jonathan wrote the, he wrote the, the screenplay or the, you know, the, the, the book of my blues. And uh, every song has a chapter in the book, you know. And uh, so you can see some of the first images from the graphic novel uh, by Nicholas Burns. He's a Canadian artist, a great guy. You know? So it's just, it's sort of rolling out slowly. There's a lot of story to tell. I guess you could say this is sort of my redheaded stranger, you know? <laughs> oh, and, oh my God. Yes. Oh yeah. Because really of, it's yeah. got a lot of pure country in it, but really it's storytelling at, at its heart, you know, and uh, it's country music at heart, but I mean, it's everything from, you know, 
I don't know what you would call a lot of it. Uh, what we call country music now, I don't know what, you know, that really is. I know what I call it, and I call it something that sounds like Waylon or John or George Jones, you know? Absolutely. And, yeah. And I would, I'd have to say that uh, Book of My Blues, that first song, uh, was was with Billy Bob Thornton. He helped me with that. I was going to so ask you about good, Billy Bob, yeah. Yeah, I have some good uh, some good help on telling these stories. And he can tell some stories. And uh, Tom Douglas is a collaborator on the song, and uh, John Scott Sherrill. And, Another uh, blues man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And just some great writers on the record, you know. And, it's a great collaboration of great music. I'm just telling you that I don't say great lightly. This is great music. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I don't. I, you know, there. I, I, I love everybody who sends me music, and I'm grateful to every creator, but there's not a lot of them that I'm going to put in my CD player and never take it out. And I still have one of those in my car, <laughs> and it'll hold one CD. Well, yeah. And I'm going to put this one in there when, as soon as I can get it, and I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to listen forever. Well, it's this will be on CD and vinyl uh, coming in June. But in between, we're going to roll out some more videos and some more storytelling. And uh, if you go to rockabillyhitman.com, you can see new images and, and new uh, script notes from the great Jonathan Hensley. And, and we'll sort of start telling the story uh, in a, in a new way. I don't know what we're, I don't really know what I'm doing. I hadn't put a record out so long. Uh, I don't really know what, what to do with it, you know, but I do have some great help on that with uh, uh, Bob Frank and Chuck Rhodes and those guys. And I got, I got a lot of help in my corner. So I need yours too, Devin. And well, maybe, you've got it. Hey, I will. I'll keep, I want to, I'll, I'll keep singing happy birthday. If you'll keep playing my records. <laughs> You know what? I will play your records. I will tell everybody. I want to do, we're going to, we have a, a new series that we do here that's a little bit elongated because uh, this year is a little bit short for what I want to do with this record. This, we got to, we had to tell the whole story. Okay. So, so as soon as we get a little bit more music and a few more of those videos, I want to do a whole series on just this project. Can we do that? I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. And that is rockabillyhitman.com, markholly.com. And go to his official YouTube channel and you can see all the videos as they drop. Thanks, thank Mark. You. All right. Love you, my friend. Love you too. Bye-bye. And speaking of love, before we get out of here, there was uh, the queen. Who is the queen? Dolly is the queen. And she got her vaccination yesterday. Dolly did. And she wants to encourage everybody else. Well, hey, it's me. I'm finally going to get my vaccine. I'm so excited. I've been waiting a while. I'm old enough to get it. And I'm smart enough to get it. So I'm very happy that I'm going to get my Moderna shot today. And I wanted to tell everybody that you should get out there and do it too. I even changed one of my songs to fit the occasion. It goes, <clears throat> vaccine, 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 vaccine. I'm begging of you, please don't hesitate. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. Because once you're dead, then that's a bit too late. <laughs> I know I'm trying to be funny now, but I'm dead serious about the vaccine. I think we all want to get back to normal, whatever that is. And that would be a great shot in the arm, wouldn't it? If we could get back to that. But anyhow, I just wanted to encourage everybody, because the sooner we get to feeling better, the sooner we are going to get back to being normal. So I just want to say to all of you cowards out there, don't be such a chicken squat. Get out there and get shot. Anyway, that's my message to you. So I am going to call on my friend, Dr. Najia Boomrod, that's worked in research here at Vanderbilt. That's where I am today. And he's going to pop me in my arm. And so I'm going to call him in. I'm going to mask up first, though, because I have a pretty good distance between me and the camera. So I'm going to put this on and get that on, get my hair back around so I look good. You know, we got to look good. <laughs> okay, Dr. Nosh, you get in here and give me a shot. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. It's so Have good you been to practicing? see you, and thank you very much for coming. Yeah, well, thank you for helping me out. You've been here for years doing research at Vanderbilt, and you and I have been friends forever, and I thought it was only appropriate that Perhaps. you should be the one to giving me my shot today. Absolutely, and I'm so glad that you're here and that you're giving the great message, and we're ready. 
Okay, well, I'm going to wait on you. Okay. I hope you practice. I even had a little cutout in my shirt. I matched it over here because I'm sure you can just reach down in there and surely find a muscle somewhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to wait for you. All right. I'm sorry. It's all right. Do what you got to do. You're the doctor. I'm just the patient. I didn't know you were going to be so clumsy. I hope you're going to do better with my shot. <laughs> And I hope this don't look like it does on TV where it looks like they're driving an ice picking yarn. Okay. Uh, let me ask you, I have two questions to ask you. Okay. Do you have any bleeding disorders? No. Any serious allergies, uh, anaphylactic reaction? No. Okay, we're ready. I think I'm good to go. So. I'm going, I'm going. Well, it didn't take this long to film nine to five, Dr. Najee. <laughs> okay. I'm still waiting. Well, I've been waiting since December. I've been in line. Okay, okay. here I go. All right. Think you got it? I got it. Okay. I didn't hurt. Just stung a little bit, but that was from the alcohol pad, I think. Yeah. Right? Okay. All just, right. Should he put a... A band-aid? No. Uh, mess up my beauty mark? Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm joking. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> I don't want blood on my clothes. <laughs> hey, I did it. I did it. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Now, if you, uh, Tennessee is going into what they call the 1C, the people who are at high risk, and there's a whole list. They will search wherever you are as to how to get your vaccine. Uh, you can do it for your Department of Health in your county or your parish, wherever you're listening. And you can also go to your local drugstores and they all have their their areas. I know in Lebanon, Tennessee, one of the the pharmacies is Gibbs Pharmacy that has them. And of course, your your Walgreens and your CVSs and places like that. You can also check with their clinics as well. If you find yourself in need of health insurance, one Google search and a questionnaire could start your phone ringing, and those emails and those texts coming from companies all over, and it can be really confusing. And sometimes you get caught up in buying something only to find that it covers very little of what you actually need. And sometimes it can be too late to do anything about it, you know, after the fact, like when you need your insurance. That's why one click to my friend, my insurance guy, Health Insurance Harvey, can keep that from happening. HarveyDurham.com. Chat with him. Set up a virtual appointment anywhere in the country, practically. He's licensed in 40 states. He'll look at your needs, your budget, and share every single thing that his insurance is going to cover and what it won't. You don't pay for what you don't need. If he can't save you money or can't give you better coverage, he won't sign you. You are under no obligation. So do yourself a favor. Get a free comparison quote from Health Insurance Harvey. It just might work for you like it did me. I'm not his commercial announcer. I'm his client at HarveyDurham.com. Uh, about Mark Colley's song, love that song, Real Country is Alive. Dorinda Owens, hello, Mark. And a great shout out to my friends in Upper Alabama. Good morning from Suzanne and Mark Thomas. So thank you guys for listening. Remember, be safe and be kind. And remember, you are loved.